Hi everybody, this is Anne. The fall is when many of the craft festivals happen, and of course as potters we're busy all year round getting ready for them. Some of the best selling items at the festivals are pieces related to the holidays, like ornaments. I thought I'd demonstrate three different ways to hand build them. First, I designed some templates for you to cut out. There's a link to the free templates in the description section below. I usually roll out a quarter inch slab, but for this project I rolled a thinner 1 8 inch and ribbed it. Thinner clay needs a much gentler touch, so I'm layering a piece of plastic wrap over the slab and turning it over for an easy peel off. I had this crocheted table runner that I thought would make a fun texture. I laid the runner over the slab and rolled the texture onto it. When I peeled it away, I was left with this Victorian look. I placed the template down over the slab and cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Rolling the texture over the clay thinned out the slab even more. The X-Acto knife keeps the thin clay from ripping. The great thing about using thinner slabs is that you're making ornaments which are so lightweight they can hang easily on any holiday tree or wreath. I placed one more piece of plastic over the slab and flipped it over so the texture was on the bottom. With the back of my wet fingernail, I gently beveled the sides of each template arm. I scored all of the sides. I slipped every other edge. I'll do the construction inside the styrofoam half sphere. The curvature will take the pressure off the vulnerable areas and keep the clay from tearing as I lift each arm. I place clay lugs under the mold to stabilize it. I peeled away the first two arms from the plastic and began attaching them together. I was very careful to minimize touching of the outer textured area while sealing the seam. Really get a tight connection to the first two arms, as they'll come under more stress with the more panels that are connected to it. I continued connecting all the sides, making sure the points connected at the top. I was worried that at least one of the points may disconnect. So I added a little ball of clay inside the piece at the very top before connecting the last panel. I connected the seams of the last template arm just like the others very gently and one side at a time until I got it all sealed up. Once there was air trapped in the middle, it was easier to pick it up and smooth the sides without worrying about the piece collapsing. When the clay stiffened up, I cut a small hole in the top. This will allow air to escape when being fired. The last step is to create a hanger. I rolled out a coil and twisted it, then bent it into a hook. I attached it at the very top. Here's one I made earlier, where I carved all the texture by hand, even on the hanger. The bottom of the ornament is flat, so I can set the ornament on that part when I place it in the kiln. Here's another template I made using the star shape as my inspiration. This one has a really pointed end and thus no flat sides for it to sit on. I created a little cylindrical stand where I'll place the top of the ornament for firing. I just won't glaze the part that the stand will come in contact with. I'm always trying to plan ahead. I thought I'd make one more template for you this time with six sides and some curves. Here's the form that the template produced. This pear-shaped ornament. Again, I hand carved all the lines around the curves. Here they are, all fired to cone 5 with a 5 minute hold. 
I brushed under glaze on them, then wiped it back so some of it would stay in the crevices. I then brushed on eggshell wash for a more satin look. I think this adds to the Victorian antique kind of appearance. I haven't done pinch pots in a while. This was the perfect project for one. I started out rolling soft clay into a rounded ball about one and a half to two inches in diameter. I used my wire to slice the ball in two. I took the first half and pinched my fingers into the center about a quarter inch from the bottom, then began pushing the clay outward. I worked from the center out to the sides, then continued pinching the clay upwards, stretching the clay until I had a shell about a quarter inch thick all the way around. Depending on how dry the clay is, the outer shell may begin to crack. I used a wet, red rubber rib to smooth away any break marks. I repeated these steps with the other half of the clay ball. The goal is to create a mirrored image of the first half. I scored the top rim of each side. I slipped one of the halves. I put the ball back together and really worked the seam. My goal is to work the clay over so that the seam disappears completely. I ribbed over the seam to complete that smoothing process. Finally, I rolled the ball to round it back out. I could leave it like this, or I can reshape it into something else. To do that, I needed to poke a hole in it to release a little bit of air. I decided to create a bottom edge and flatten it out so that it was a pear shape. I ribbed it smooth, then flattened the bottom so it wouldn't roll when being fired. Like the others, I added a hanger to the top. I like hand carving designs into these ornaments with simple tools I have in my studio. Here I started with the pointed end of this piece of metal to create some rows of scaling along the bottom half. Here's another possible tool for decorating, a wooden ball on a dowel rod. I just rolled it into the wet clay to create an indentation. With the blunt end of my needle tool, I created a center. With the sharp end of a pointed stick, I created petal shapes around the center. I had these ball-ended tools that I used to create a border around the flower. There are endless ways to use simple objects in your studio to decorate with. Here's a pinched round ornament that I made earlier where I used those same objects to decorate with. The bottom side is flat so it won't roll when being fired in the kiln. Again, I applied underglaze to the bisque piece then wiped it back. I then brushed on eggshell wash over the top and fired it to cone five with a five minute hold. Even a boring circular ornament can become something more exciting. Finally, I thought it'd be fun to make 3D ornaments with cookie cutters. I thought this bell and angel would work well for this project. I rolled out an eighth of an inch slab on a piece of plastic wrap. I cut two of each of the ornaments from the slab. I used my wet finger to bevel the edges of one of the bells and all around both of the angels.
the bell clacker was off center, so I needed to turn over that second bell cutout so the two would line up when stacked. Let's construct the angel. Using my X-Acto, I cut the wings off both sides of her. I stacked each pair of the wings together with the beveled edges facing outward, then sealed the edges. I then took a small styrofoam ball and draped each angel half over it, stretching the clay so it was rounded. I scored both sides, slipped one side, then attached them around the edges, leaving the bottom edge open. While keeping the belly a bit rounded, I gently pulled the remaining sides inward and pinched the bottom edge together. To add volume to the piece, I cut a hole in the bottom, then blew into the piece which stretched out the clay even more. I tapped it down on the table to give it a flat spot to sit on in the kiln. I scored and slipped each wing and attached them to the sides. Here's one I made earlier where I attached a little heart-shaped piece of clay for the face. I also cut two holes in the wings to string her up later. I hand carved her face, wings, and dress. For the bell, I repeated the stretching of the clay over the styrofoam ball. I scored and slipped the sides, then attached them. I rolled out a small rectangular strip of clay. I placed the bell down over the slab and traced around the bottom edge. I scored inside the traced lines. I scored and slipped the bottom of the bell. I placed the bell back over the traced area, then pulled the strip up and attached it to the bottom edge. I cut the clay away and removed the excess clay. I then firmly attached the bottom edge to the body. Here's one I made earlier, where again I hand carved it and attached a hanger. To decorate the angel, I used Amico Celadon Snow and Cherry Blossom so you could see the texture underneath. For the bell, I used Amico Celadon Snow over the smoothed areas and Amico Celadon Smoke over the carved areas. Ornaments hold such a sentimental place in many people's memories and traditions, and there are many ways to personalize these for your family, friends, and customers. Give them a try. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.